Hi, welcome back to another knitting podcast. It's episode number three. It's a little later than usual. Today is April 8th and I usually film this at the beginning of the month, but last week I was too busy. So I have an extra week to knit to show you uh, what I've knitted so far in the month of March. I hope you're doing well. I'm doing well. The sun is shining. Spring is here. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six things to share today. Before we start, let me tell you what I'm wearing. So I made this last year. It's a summer top, sleeveless. Uh, this is the Knitting for Olive Olives Vest Adult. And I used Noro Sonata yarn, which is this variegated blue yarn. Uh, I still have some left, so I think this year I'm gonna make a slightly different version of a summer top. I used a 2.5mm needle, so it's a very fine gauge. Um, I do notice that the neckline is starting to stretch out a bit too much. And also on the side, um, it is a bit too wide, so I do have to wear something over it to not show my bra but I really like it. It's very comfortable. Um, now let's get started with the finished objects. So the first finished objects you have seen if you watched the previous episode, it's this headband. So in the previous episode, I think I knitted about maybe this much from here to here. And back then I still did not know what I was gonna do with it. I already knew I wanted to knit a headband. I kind of followed a pattern, a free pattern called the dual bond or something like that. Um, but I was too lazy to do the technique. So I did something very simple, which creates this fold. So let me explain a little bit. I used my leftover drops air yarn. Um, yes, this is really the last bit of it. It's so satisfying when you're able to use it like the last, last bits of yarn. Um, so I just did a simple knit to purl to and I just basically knit a long flat piece and then when I almost ran out of yarn, I basically fold these like this together. You probably, if you find online the sandwich method, you, you'll find it. So I basically just sandwich half of this with the other half like that and just sewed it together and that will create this. Um, yeah, I'll wear it for you. It has been actually perfect for the um, transitional weather from winter to spring. Um, I did have to get used to not having warm on the top of my head, but you know, you get used to it very quickly. And sometimes I also wear it with the cross in front, like so. Yes, I like it. And it's a really soft yarn, so I highly recommend Drops Air for head pieces um, or hoodies because um, I think they're really skin friendly. Yes, so that's the first finished object. The second finished object, um, there's a small story behind this. I feel like today's episode or knitting in March was mostly about using up my scraps, which I'm very happy about. Um, and this is one of the scraps I had. And this is the simple Pearl Soho classic ripped hat. I held two strands of Drops Nord in the color green together. And the reason I knitted this is because at the time, I'll show you later, I was knitting a pattern that was more complicated and my, I just needed something super simple, super mindless. And the process of knitting this was fantastic. It was like, it was the feeling of coming home, you know, for my fingers. It's like, oh, I can finally just 
do the motion and not think about it. I use these knitting needles. Um, this is the Lantern Moon set. I'll show you. And it was a beautiful combination with this yarn. It, it felt so smooth. It felt so smooth. Uh, so I had a great time, even though um, I can't really wear the hat anymore because it's becoming a bit too warm. Uh, two strands of drops in warm is really quite warm, but maybe on the cool mornings when I bike to work. Um, I'll put it on for you. This is what it looks like. I think I needed the size 2 or 3. Uh, you cast on 112 stitches um, and then decreasing here it might not be fully accurate like I might have modified the pattern you know with hats you can just do whatever um, but I have four points of decreases and I chose the slip, slip knit decrease method because I like that the most. Um, I do have to say drop snore. I think if I remember correctly, uh, has alpaca content. So it definitely stretched out. So in the beginning it was quite tight, but now it actually fits perfectly. So I'm actually happy about it. I don't know if you can see this little point um i think the more i wear it the more it will like relax and become more like this kind of not weather appropriate right now but still it gave me such satisfaction in the process so this was more a process knit than a project knit okay that was the second finished object and then the third finished object i don't have it with me but I'm super proud of it. I'll put pictures. Are you ready? Let's go. It is the emotional support chicken. So the story behind this is that I am in this knitting WhatsApp group and someone mentioned like a casual knit along. So I thought, yeah, why not? And coincidentally, that same week, I had a birthday party to go to and I thought, I'm going to give that person an emotional support chicken. Hand knit. So I did. So the pattern is by the Knitting Tree, based in LA. Um, so one morning, I bought the pattern uh, and then I just started to cast on. And it was extra fun because I was able to use up my scraps. I had, I think, half balls of Peruvian Highland wool by Phil Colana and uh, some sock yarn that was some, some thick sock yarn. And it just, everything just happens to be perfect. You know, I had like a tiny bit of scrap left and I was able to use that scrap to use as filling for the chicken. Um, yeah, it was a super fun project. I knitted it in a week. Um, I also learned quite some new techniques. So it was my first time learning how to do wrap and turn, but garter stitch and was super easy. Um, it was also my first time learning how to seam garter, garter stitch seamlessly um yeah yeah and it was a lot easier than i thought because i have dabbled in amigurumi crochet but um for some reason i couldn't get the hang of it um but this pattern you basically knit flat um for everything except for no, yeah, you knit flat for everything, so um, it's super easy. It's just knit stitches back and forth, except for the beak. 
Um, yeah, so if you want an emotional support chicken, I highly recommend this pattern. So this was both a process and a project knit. It was so super fun. I, I named the chicken. The chicken's name is Ernest. Um, apparently, according to my boyfriend, Ernest is a character in a game. And in that game, Ernest is a chicken. So let me know if you know that game. <laughs> I'm already thinking about knitting my second emotional support chicken for myself because of course, now I don't have one. And I want one. And I want them in different sizes and it's gonna be happy little chicken family. And if I have yarn left over, I, I can even knit some chicken eggs. Ah, it's so cute. It's so cute. It's so fun. Um, okay, let's close off the chapter of chickens um, and go to our whips. Oh, I actually have four whips to show you because one whip is carrying over from the previous months and is my longest standing whip yet. And it's in this big basket. Okay. I'm pretty far with my off-grid sweater. I don't remember where I was the last time. Um, but yeah, I've knitted a lot this month on my off-grid. So I basically finished everything except for my second sleeve. My neck is done. And my first sleeve is done. Body is done. And just this one. <sighs> it's so heavy. Uh, shall I try it on for you? Do you want? Do you want me to try it on? I don't think I've tried it on. I don't think there's a front or back. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so the sleeve length is good. It's like past my wrist. The neck is pretty tall and the body length is also good so of course this stitch pattern cinches in um, so it's supposed to look more like this so when I block it the fabric will relax a lot more and I think and I hope that the neck then will sit looser um, because this yarn is 100% wool is slightly scratchy so yeah, I don't want this to be touching my neck constantly. Uh, yeah, I'm really almost done. So it looks very bulky because I have a lot of ends to weave in. Um, you have no idea. I'm not looking forward to that part. Yeah, this is what the wrong side looks like. And all the ends it's crazy let me let me show you the worst part of it look, look at this all these ends <sighs> did i mention the designer alice from rose knitwear and this is the off grid sweater and i use drops charisma in the color red white and blue uh, it's a beautiful color combination. In the beginning, I thought that the red was too vibrant, but now I actually think it's pretty nice. Also for spring, because yes, this is probably going to be way too hot for spring, but maybe, you know, for like a chillier morning or a chillier evening, I can throw this over a t-shirt. Yes, I do hope that I can at least wear it once this season all right so that was my first work in progress what's my second okay let's talk about this one i will rip it's sad sometimes it doesn't work out and you just have to make the decision to to say no to a pattern let's talk about it in about two months i will be heading home 
to Suriname and then I'll, I'll be visiting my family and of course my little baby nephew and I wanted to knit him a cardigan so this is what I knit up so far it is the Lila Crispin a cardigan by Phil Colana. It's a free pattern. And, and there is this stitch pattern. It's an all-over stitch pattern. What's it called? Well, a Harlequin. Yes, a Harlequin pattern. Um, but I messed up a whole bunch. Let me just show you like this. Can you see it? And I messed up a whole lot. And I'm not someone who likes to keep looking at a piece of paper or at my phone when I'm knitting. I want to knit mindlessly or at least read my stitches. But I don't think I'm there yet with reading, with reading stitch patterns on, on, on knitted fabric. So I think I shifted the stitch pattern a little bit so everything is messed up. And I did not have the heart yet to rip all of this out. And also the pattern is a little bit confusing because you have to continue the pattern while increasing at the um, shoulder, you know? So I, I feel like I am not advanced enough yet to kind of work with this pattern i still want to make my nephew something i think i'm just gonna do a simple stockinette cardigan or maybe even sweater um, and i think this blue yarn is gonna be perfect actually let's talk about the yarn so this is 100 percent cotton yarn that i bought at um what's the store called again oh yeah Sostrene Grene um, and apparently the brand name is Anna and Clara um, it's a relatively cheap cotton yarn um, I do like it and I bought three balls of this on a whim once maybe two years ago even um, yeah and I think that would be enough for a baby cardigan I haven't ripped it out until today because I wanted to at least show you my hard work and my attempt after this i'm gonna rip it out and um, start a simple stockinette cardigan also something that was surprising to me is that um, i enjoy knitting with cotton or maybe it is the combination of this cotton yarn with my bamboo needle by Like. I think that's the brand name. Um, this is a very thin needle. This is a 2.5 millimeter. I use it as my um, sock yarn in the beginning, but then I realized I'm more of a 2.25 millimeter sock yarn person, uh, sock needle person. Um, but still, it's really nice for color work. But yeah, I really love these needles. Maybe I should invest more. Anyways, I will say goodbye to this failed attempt and then start a new one and then can't wait to see my baby nephew in it then I have two more things to show you this I've never bought any um, West Knits uh, pattern or yarn um, but I got this bag when I bought some yarn secondhand online and it came with this bag so ever since I am using it, it's really handy so this is another scrap yarn project so remember my drop snort hat? I had some left so I decided to make green scrappy socks and I have finished the first one, I have to say relatively quickly, over Easter weekend. So this is the sock. 
and I used the method of helical knitting. Um, so if you don't know what helical knitting is, you basically hold two strands of yarn and you alternate um, the yarns per row with three stitches in between um, so that it's basically um, like a very stripy pattern. You can see it more clearly here, um, but then you don't get jocks. Um, like a little shift in color and it's super easy and I for some reason I just really wanted to use that method in knitting and because I had these three colors of green I was like okay I'm, I want to play with these three colors of green um, and this is just a simple vanilla sock pattern uh, I'm usually a toe-up kind of sock knitter, but this time I decided to do a uh, cuff down. So this yarn is a nettle sock yarn by the brand Onion uh, in this light, almost yellowy, mustardy green. Uh, so I used that for um, the cuff hair and then I use helical knitting um, together with this color this is I think actually just some acrylic green yarn I don't know where I've got it from um, I'm almost sure that I did not buy this it just came into my possession so then I alternated those two colors and then I used the netto sock yarn again for the heel flap and then I just continue my uh, helical knitting until I ran out of the netto sock yarn and then I switched it with my drop snort yarn until I'm at the toe and then I finished everything with only the acrylic yarn so this is the first and I've started my second. So you can see there are two colors of green yarn attached to my knitting project. So this is just a palette cleanser um, for when I have finished a big project and I need some time to find my second project uh, so this is a nice little intermission intermission is that what you say yeah uh, so this is whip number three and then finally our final whip I cast this is on yesterday it was a spontaneous cast on I've had this yarn for a while now. Uh, this is the, let's see. So this is the Sublime Extra Fine Merino Worsted Yarn in this color. I bought it again on, the, on this Dutch marketplace, online marketplace. And I remember biking to her place and, and she even showed me what she knitted it with. With, uh, with a different color but the same brand she needed a blanket uh, and she even asked me okay do I want more balls of yarn to try to sell me more anyways and I have tried to knit the step-by-step -step sweater by Florence Miller but I didn't like the look of it so I ripped it out uh, and I have been sitting in my stash for a while and I've been thinking okay I can try again maybe with a different gauge, with a different size, the, the same step-by-step -step sweater. Mm. But yesterday on a whim, I decided to <laughs> knit this up. So it's not much, but this is gonna be the Eric sweater by Vilkalana. Again, it's a free pattern. I don't know if you can tell, but I like my free patterns. 
and this is new for me because this is using the saddle shoulder construction technique so until now this is technically also a saddle shoulder but I'm more familiar with um, raglan styles um, are just basically seaming at the top here kind of constructions I've never done saddle shoulder constructions especially um, the way they do it in this pattern so it was really fun I, I do like it so far um, I do see myself um, reusing this construction um, it's a free pattern so I can tell you about the construction basically you start at the back the size I cast on you have to cast on 10 stitches so you basically just cast on 10 stitches oh no this is this part yeah um, you use provisional cast on to cast on 10 stitches in the middle of the back then you knit a couple of rows and then you increase a little bit and then you cast on extra stitches here and then knit a couple of rows so that's going to be the um, one side of the back and then you pick up stitches at your provisional cast on and then you, you do the exact same thing on the other side so you have the two back parts um, yes and then you have to cast on for the front so here and then basically just pick up stitches all over to work in the round and then you start increasing um, at the four sides here for your shoulder let me put it on and see if it makes any sense I don't have my knit um, my collar yet so it's rolling constantly so you can't see but eventually you will see this saddle shoulder seam which I do like the design of and in the back I'm just gonna turn it around real quick in the back you will see the straight line of a seam which I think looks really elegant yeah and I do think this uh, color fits spring summer um, and it's merino so I don't think it's gonna be too warm so again for the chillier mornings or evenings um, this is a super wash yes yeah, it's, it's machine washable so it's probably gonna stretch out a whole lot but I want an oversized sweater anyways the only thing I hope that it's not going to do is that it's gonna to be too wide on the shoulder because it is a men's sweater anyways um, and I don't have like very broad shoulders I'm sorry if you hear that noise I think it's the local um, cleaner or the leaf blower I think so I apologize for the background noise um, but yeah as I was saying I hope that I don't have too much fabric on my shoulder because I'm not wearing for I'm not I'm not making it for a man or a male body uh, but yeah we'll see if that happens I just have to accept it and then learn from it so yeah I'm knitting this on four millimeter needles uh, using my lantern moon again um, so I've mostly been knitting um, on this because it's you know it's the hype it's my new cast on but I'm gonna promise myself and promise you that the next time uh, you see me again in the next episode I will have finished my off-grid sweater because as I said I really want to have worn it at least once um, I think that's it I think this is all I have to share with you I hope you're doing well I hope you enjoyed this knitting podcast um, and I'll see you next month bye bye also 
This is not a hand-knit sock, but look at how cute it is. Some broccoli, my favorite vegetable. <laughs>